G'day everyone, Matt here, Chase the Weekend. How are you today? Well, I, how am I doing today? I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited, right? Let's look at this. Button there it is. Papa! Got some power on. Happy days. So those of you who are new tonight or haven't seen the last video that we did, this is part two of the motorhome build. So the short, the really short version is, mum and dad have bought a motorhome. 12 volt system's pretty old, couple AGM batteries, one solar panel, no inverter. So I've ripped all that out. We put in three lithium batteries, a Victron Multi Plus 3 kVA inverter, 2.4 kilowatt, three solar panels, 360 watt solar panels, semi-flexible, first of all, because they're light, second of all, because that's the most I could fit up there because the roof is full of other stuff. I actually did a video, an unboxing video on the solar panel. So if you want to see that, check out the description. I'll put the link in there for that last video. I think it's a pretty good video, but who am I to judge? Anyway, where was I up to? I've totally forgotten where I was up to. A few moments later. So that's where we're at with this uh, motorhome build. So now I'm gonna show you where we're at. Everything is in. It uh, still needs some tidying up. So the, the bus is a day or two away from being picked up and then it's going. So I've really had to just jam everything in there, secure it down, do all the wiring the best I can. I've tidied up, but what I'm gonna do is once the motorhome goes and comes back, then I'll have some more time, then I can actually go through and make it look a lot neater than what it is. So please be kind uh, in the comments. I know it's, it's not entirely finished, but it's it's pretty damn close and everything is in and it's all working. So now the AC wiring isn't done yet. So we've got the Sparky coming hopefully tomorrow or the next day. So it's gonna be cutting it pretty close. Right, so I've mounted the projector charger back in there. I've got the Orion here with a breaker for it's on the battery side. So I've got the 15 amp smart solar in there. So that'll be the one that connects to the portable solar panel. And I've run the cable out down to the outside with a blue Anderson plug. Why have I used a blue Anderson plug you say? Well, that's because when I make the portable solar panel, I'm actually gonna do the panels in series with no regulator. So it's gonna be unregulated solar it's going to have a blue Anderson plug on it so that you can't plug anything else into it other than that solar panel. Victor on Orion, smart battery protect, which goes to the whole 12 volt house system. Um, yes, the wiring is not quite neat yet. We've got the main battery fuse down there, 250 amp. We've got the cables in there, and then on this side, got the Lynx bus in there, three batteries. And one thing I don't have yet is the terminal fuse. So I've ordered three fuses that will bolt to that terminal. So if there's a problem, the fuse will blow and then the power will be stopped right there at that terminal. Now in here, I've got the servo. Got the servo in there, all hooked up. Move the smart shunt because the timber wasn't strong enough. So that's sitting there and that's all hooked up. Now, as I showed last time, I've got the main smart solar up there. She's all in and going. Don't worry about that cable, that's, an, that's a nothing. And then I've got the breakers in there. So I've got one for the PV on this side and then what that's the output side of, for the battery. All right, now this is the cool bit. I've got the servo, well the Touch 50 all hooked up. You can see what's going on. You can see the AC input, AC loads, which aren't any at the moment. Solar's off because it's night time. And then down the bottom there, I've got the DC power because I've got the 12 volt house system. Come up really good. So what I'll do is I'll go through the programming of the smart solar because that's probably the most common one that people are gonna buy first. And if you wanna follow along at home, go to your Play Store, your Apple Store, Victron Connect app. Uh, it's a little blue symbol with a white squiggly line in it. Go there, download that, and then in there, in the menu, there's a demo library. Go into the demo library, and then you can pick the product that you want, which will be Victron Smart Solar. Select that, 
and then you can follow along at home and I'll show you how to set that up. All right, let's crack on. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to, by the magic of editing, the next shot you will see, we'll have this table all set up and the computer and we'll all be ready to go. Let's go. Okay, so I've got the laptop set up, ready to go. Now with your smart products, smart solar, smart shunt, smart iron, et cetera, et cetera, there's two, two ways that you can program it. You can use the Victron Connect app and Bluetooth and you Bluetooth and you pair directly to the device and then you connect the app and then you go through and you can set it that way. If you don't have Bluetooth, the other way you can do it is with a V direct to USB adapter. I uh, forget how much I paid for this one. It was like 20 or 30 bucks. Now it's got a USB one end and a V direct cable the other end. You can plug that in your device, plug it into your laptop, and then you have a connection. Use your Victron Connect app on your laptop and program it that way. The only thing is you've got to make sure that your device has the V direct plug on it. Not all smart products will have this. So the Smart Orion doesn't, the Smart Battery Protect does not, Smart Shunt does, and the Smart Souls do. So that's another way to do it. Uh, it's pretty cheap. I'll just have it in my tool bag when I'm out on site. Now, there's a couple of things that you will need. You're going to need to know your battery specs or your battery settings, okay? You're going to have to get them off the battery supplier. If you bought a no-name battery from overseas somewhere, you're going to have to either run the gauntlet and set it up to generic settings or you're going to have to try and contact the seller or the supplier and get your settings. Unfortunately, with a lot of 12-volt batteries, the settings and the specifications can be fairly vague. So you really need to have a decent supplier that can help you with that. Now, I've got the settings for the batteries. So my bulk setting is 14.1 volts. Float is 13.6, low voltage cutout is 11.2, maximum charge rate is 50 amps per battery, so 150 amps maximum charge. Maximum discharge is 100 amps per battery, so 300 amps. So what I'll do now is I'll run you through the smart solar settings. I'm having trouble connecting to my Bluetooth and the smart solar's all the way up there and my needs lead's not long enough. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a demo. So if you're following along at home, Go up to the library, hit the demo products, scroll down until you see a smart solar or solar charges, and then find a smart solar. It doesn't really matter which one, they're all the same. Now with this smart solars, they'll ask you to do firmware updates. So just go through, do your firmware updates. These one, the smart solars, I'm pretty confident that you don't need to be super technical to do these but you still need to get your settings off your battery supplier, right? So once you've done that, once you've done your two updates, same thing, COG, go to your battery tab, select your battery voltage, which will be um, 12 volts in my case. Now on this thing, it'll ask you for a code to select 12 volt. We'll just, oops, help if I got it right. So we set it 12 volt, maximum charge current's 15 amps. You can drop it down if you need to, if you've only got a 10 amp fuse or something silly and you can run nine amps or whatever. Or if your battery's too small, you can drop it down, doesn't matter. Charge enabled, pretty self-explanatory, we need that on. Battery preset, now I just go user defined and expert mode is on. And then that allows us to go through all the other settings. So same as the same as the inverter, 14.1, absorption floats 13.6, equalization will be the same as the bulk or the absorption. There's no equalization with lithium batteries anyway. Rebulk offset will remain. So that's how much the battery voltage will drop before it go, restarts the charge cycle back to bulk again. So if it's sitting on float, it'll drop 0 0.2 volts and then it'll go back to bulk. Um, absorption duration we want fixed because we've got lithium batteries. Absorption time we want four hours for these batteries. Again, you get this, get this settings off your supplier. Tail current leave, equalization percentage, that's all the same. Temperature compensation, 
you can either have that off or get that from your supplier and then low temperature cut off zero degrees because i don't want it charging below zero and that's it job done the only other step is if you've got a few of the smart products you can actually connect them all together with bluetooth and you can do v smart networking so you just go in there create a network call it whatever you will and then as you go through each of the other smart devices you join those onto that network and then they'll all share the data and it'll be all super happy that's it she's all programmed ready to go on the first adventure she's good she's good to go it's been a, a big job pretty happy with how it's all turned out i've done the best i can with what i've got the the spaces were really tight uh we fitted a lot of stuff in there now, at the end of the day the bus is now capable to go away on extended trips free camping so if you've liked this episode make sure you hit that thumbs up button help spread it out far and wide also hopefully we've earned your subscription today um re we really do appreciate you taking the time out of your day to watch our videos uh, means the world to us if you have any questions, please leave a comment um, and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Or if you have any suggestions or tips or whatever you want to share, feel free to put it in there. So remember, the weeks are long, but the weekends are short. So get out there, get in your swag or your car or you get hook, hook up your caravan or your boat or whatever. Get out there and chase the weekend. See you next time.